the northern and southern Torrid meteor showers filled the skies with fireball meteors this month. We also have the peak of the more active Leonid meteor shower. Jupiter and Uranus are both at opposition, shining their best for the year. Saturn ends its retrograde motion and the winter circle is now rising above the horizon at a more reasonable time. Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for November 2023. And before we dive into all the exciting events this month, I just want to let you know that the What's in the Night Sky 2024 calendar is now ready for print. The proofs are looking amazing. Based on feedback, I made the images a little bit brighter this year because a lot of people were hanging them in somewhat darker places. And the astronomical events that are pre-written into the calendar are now in a smaller font, giving you more room for your personal events. So head on over to the link in the video description down below because there's about a week left to take advantage of the pre-order sale price of 9 dollars because we should be starting shipping in a week or two. So head on over, get yourself a calendar, and make sure you don't miss an astronomical event in 2024. So let's start with a general look at the Northern Hemisphere night sky. And yes, Milky Way course season is over, but as darkness falls, you will find the Great Rift standing almost vertically on the western horizon. This is actually a dark dust lane blocking us from seeing the Milky Way beyond. And in my opinion, it's just as worthy as being photographed as the Milky Way core itself. As the night goes on, the Great Rift also sets, leaving the Cygnus region of the Milky Way a bright fuzzy region standing against the northwestern horizon. If we swing around to face the east, we will see the winter constellations now rising much earlier. So as darkness falls, Auriga and Taurus the Bull are already above the horizon and they are chased into the sky by Orion and Gemini. With the full winter circle asterism of stars becoming visible in the sky when Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, rises at around 11pm. It twinkles like a disco ball when it's low on the horizon and can be quite captivating to stare out, so keep an eye out for it this month. Facing north, it's also a good time of year to see the Big Bear, Ursa Major, skirting along the northern horizon in an upright position. This allows you to capture it with some foreground interest quite easily. In the southern hemisphere, you might get a brief glimpse of the core and the Great Rift set in parallel on the western horizon as darkness falls. But turn to face east and you'll find the Milky Way band rising again along with the likes of Taurus, Orion, Auriga and finally Gemini completing the southern summer circle asterism. So it's not the winter circle for the southern hemisphere dwellers. This is also a good time to capture a Milky Way arch panorama with the albeit fainter region of the Milky Way. Now we have a few meteor showers to talk about this month, so let's start with the Taurids. And the Taurid meteor shower is split into two separate streams of debris in space. And it's not 100% sure whether that's two separate streams from two separate comets, or whether the stream of debris from Comet NK was split into two different streams by perturbations in Jupiter's gravity. But either way, it gives rise to the northern and southern Taurid meteor showers, which both have their radiant points within the constellation Taurus. Unlike other meteor showers, the Taurids don't really have a sharp peak of activity. They kind of ramble on for like a month and a half or two months, producing three to five meteors per hour from a dark sky location. And whilst those rates are pretty low, the good thing about the Taurids is that they produce a high percentage of fireball meteors, which are meteors that are slow moving and brighter than Venus in the night sky. The Southern Taurids peaked last month around the 10th, but continues to be active until about the 20th of this month. And then the Northern Taurids is set to peak around the 12th to the 13th of this month. But again, the peak is not a sharp sort of boost in activity. It's just kind of steady throughout the whole month. So long story short, keep an eye out for Taurid Fireball Meteors this month, particularly the first half of the month when the two meteor showers overlap and there's also not much moonlight to hinder the meteors from view. Then on the night of the 17th into the morning of the 18th, we have the peak of the Leonid meteor shower, which produces a higher rate of meteors than the Taurids at about 10 to 15 per hour. The moon will be a waxing crescent, so it will set in the late evening, leaving the morning hours perfect for viewing meteors. And the radiant point is within the constellation Leo. So whilst it is a slight advantage to those in the Northern Hemisphere, it is a meteor shower that can be enjoyed from both the Northern and Southern Hemispheres. But remember, you don't have to look in the direction of the radiant point 
As long as the radiant point is in the sky, meteors will fall all over the sky. So it's best to head to a dark sky location and position yourself so you can see as much sky as possible. As for the planets this month, Jupiter reaches opposition on the 3rd. This is when it's directly opposite the Sun, meaning it's closest to Earth and shining its brightest for the year at magnitude minus 2.9. As it's opposite the Sun, it can be seen rising in the east as the Sun sets in the west. And then Jupiter sets itself in the west as the Sun rises in the east the following morning. For those in the northern hemisphere, it arches high across the southern skies. But for those in the southern hemisphere, it pretty much goes directly overhead and may creep into the northern skies. On the 25th, it's joined by an almost full moon. Saturn, shining at a much more modest 0.7, ends its retrograde motion on the 5th. It can be found in the constellation Aquarius, starting the night high in the sky and sinking to the west as the night goes on. It's joined by the moon on the 20th. Venus can be found in the morning twilight, shining at a super bright minus 4.4. On the 9th, it's joined by a thin crescent moon. And for some areas of the world, the moon will temporarily block Venus from view. I'll put a link in the video description for more information about that, but be aware Extreme caution needs to be taken when trying to observe this event, as it will happen close to the sun in the sky. Uranus also reaches opposition this month on the 13th, so it's a good time to spot the distant elusive planet. It will be in the constellation Aries, and look for a green star roughly halfway between Jupiter and the Pleiades star cluster. Full moon this month falls on the 27th, and it is known to Native American cultures as the beaver moon because this is the time of year when beavers begin to take shelter in their lodges, having laid up sufficient food stores for the long winter ahead. I'm sure those of you in the Northern Hemisphere are keeping an eye out for the Northern Lights. There's been some amazing displays recently. Check out the app ISS Detector as well to see if there's any International Space Station flyovers for your location coming soon. And that's pretty much all I've got for you this month, guys. Let me know what you're most looking forward to this month in the comments down below. But now onto the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph for a chance to win a prize. Third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a 2024 night sky calendar. And first place wins a copy of my book, Photographing the Night Sky. If entering by Instagram, make sure to tag Wittens underscore Alan Wallace on your images. Mentioning us in the comments or description is not enough. It has to be a tag on the image. If entering via Twitter, just add the hashtag Wittens. Last month, I was looking for images of the solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, or any images with meteors, and here are the winners. So in third place was Martin with this beautiful image of Orion above a misty moorland in the Netherlands with what appears to be a nice torrid meteor streaking across the sky. It's very nicely processed, has a nice mystical nighttime feel to it, and it's not overdone. I also love how Orion is framed by the trees. He also added a nice caption about how meteors remind him of his late father, and if there was ever a father figure in the sky, I think it would be Orion. In second place was Ryan, with the sequence of the annular solar eclipse above a rock formation in Utah. I love it when people stick to the true size of the sun in the sky, rather than compositing images from a telephoto lens onto a wide angle scene. So very nicely done, and it also appears to be Ryan's first post on Instagram, so do go give him a warm welcome. But in first place was this spectacular image from Liron of the annular solar eclipse behind some birds. I'm sure the top one is a seagull. I'm not so sure about the bottom one, so feel free to put your guesses in the comments below. But he also captured similar images with other birds as well, so do go over to his profile and check those out as well. It was really nice to see something different, and what a great combination of two different genres of photography absolutely loved it. This month is a bit of a quiet one, but I think I want to encourage people to photograph the Milky Way beyond Milky Way call season. So let's go with the Great Rift, the dark dust lane that's found in the West after darkness falls. What are you most looking forward to this month? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to follow my new page on Instagram, Wittens underscore Alan Wallace. I'm going to be more active on this soon, I promise. <laughs> Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and check out my recent video from Alma Observatory. I think I captured some of my best ever images between those two nights. As always, if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.